Welcome back fellow coders, Jared O'Leary here with Boot Up. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create music player controls in a Scratch project. So to do this, you actually don't necessarily need any kind of sprite for this. So you can run all this code in your stage. So in my stage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating a variable and I'm going to make the variable something like song number. So that way we can keep track of which song we are on. Now we want to set our song to the first song when we start the project. So when the green flag is pressed, I'm going to set the song number to one. Then the first thing that I want to do after I've set it is I want to actually start playing the music. So I'm going to create a new message called play and I'm gonna broadcast it. Now this message, what it's going to do is it's going to play the music that I've already added into the backdrop. So if you go into here, I've got four different loops that I'm going to cycle through. And I want, when I start playing, what I want it to do is I want it to stop any kind of music that might be playing, any sounds that might be going on. And I want to repeat my sounds four times. So I want to loop my music four times. And the block that I'm gonna use for this, whoops, is I want to have it play sound until done, so that way it doesn't repeat again until it finishes the entire song, however long it's gonna be for each loop. And instead of saying play drum jam until done and then go and add another block for the next one and keep doing this, I'm going to instead use my song number variable. So we can actually drag this inside of here. So now whatever our song number variable is set to, we will play that song. So for example, if it's on, if the variable is set to one, it's going to play through number one. If the variable is set through for two, it's gonna play song number two. Now, once it finishes playing this, I want it to actually go to the very next song. So to do that, I'm going to going, <laughs> can't talk. I'm going to create a, another message, and I'm going to call this one the next song message. And the code for this, when I receive it, next song, I'm going to simply change our song number by one. So change song number by one. And then I'm just gonna hit play again by broadcasting play. So check this out. We press the green flag, it starts playing. That's the second time, third time, fourth time, go to the next song. Yeah, so now it's already on to the next song. And when this one repeats through it four times, it'll go to the next song after that. And it's gonna keep doing this forever and ever and ever until I hit the stop. Okay, so I also wanna give the user the ability to go back to the previous song. So to do that, I'm going to duplicate this and change this so that it's a new message, whoops, called previous message, previous, <laughs> not previous message, previous song, can't think. And I'm going to change this by minus one. So we change to the previous song and then simply broadcast play again. Okay, now one more function that we wanna add for our user is they probably wanna be able to stop the music at some point. So we're going to say that when I receive the message called stop, I want it to do two things. I want it to stop the other scripts in the sprite. So it's gonna stop everything else that's going on in this stage. And then I want it to stop all sounds. So just in case anything else is still playing, it's going to stop that. Okay, so now I've got all of my functions in here, so that way I can go to the previous song, the next song, I can play and I can stop. Now to run this code, what we could end up doing is uh, doing something like this. So we could say, hey, I want to make it so that when I press the um, up arrow, I want to play. When I press the left arrow, I want to switch it so that it goes to the previous song. And when I press the right arrow, I want it to go to the next song. And when I uh, click on the down arrow, I want it to stop. Okay, so let's try this out. So I press the green flag, it sets the song to one. If I press down, I can stop it now. If I press up, I can play it again. If I press right, it goes to the next song. See how this is getting bigger? And if I press left, it goes to the previous song. So now it's on song number two. And 
down arrow to stop again. Cool, so that's how you can use the arrow keys to make it so there's user control. However, you can also make these buttons. So for instance, in my character builder project that I made for Boot Up, I can play my song, I can stop my song, I can go to the next song if I want to, I can go to the previous song, etc. So it's the same idea in that I'm putting all my code for previous song, stop, next song, and stuff inside of my backdrop. But for each one of these buttons, I'm simply broadcasting the next song when they're clicked instead of whenever I press a key. It's just when a button is clicked. So that's how you can make some music player controls for one of your projects in Scratch. Hey everyone, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. If you're not watching us on YouTube, you can find us on that platform as well as other social media outlets by searching for Boot Up PD. And if you're looking for more free lessons, projects, and resources for teachers and students, visit us at bootuppd.org where you can also learn about our high quality professional development.